Welcome to this second in the series of two videos on DNS. Uh, we last time set up a simple DNS server that could be queried. Uh, but if we had one server or even several servers on the internet which are expected to maintain records of absolutely every server on the internet, it just would not work. There's no way you could keep them all updated. So actually DNS is a bit more distributed than that usually. Usually you will have a local DNS server. This will be built into your router and uh, that is what your machines will query for DNS records. And of course your router isn't going to know most of the internet. So when you enter in a new website into your computer and it asks for DNS, it will ask your local DNS server built into your router and your local DNS server is going to say, well, I don't know and it will do one of two things so you can have an iterative lookup or you can have a recursive lookup so in a recursive lookup what happens is this dns server doesn't know so it then asks the next dns server up the chain which might be a global dns server it might belong to your isp internet service provider that is and then this one probably won't know the exact address but it will know which network it's located so it may well ask the company's DNS server uh, what the actual IP address is so if you were looking up Gmail the Google DNS might say well this is Gmail's DNS it then passes it back to the DNS server here which remembers it and then that passes it back to your local DNS server which remembers it which then goes uh, to your machine on the other hand, what can happen instead is if your machine, uh, you can do what's called an iterative lookup. So your machine uh, asks the local DNS server for uh, the uh, address of gmail.google.com. It can't find it, so it'll ask the local one for the address of a DNS server that deals with uh, google.com. And if it can't find it, it will ask it for the DNS of a server that can deal with just .com. And then it will contact that server and ask it for google.com. And then once it's got google.com, it will ask the Google DNS server for gmail.google.com. Let's have a look at this in action. So if I just uh, run this, I open up my notebook and I am going to put into here I'll slow this down slightly so that we can see it I can talk through it as it goes across and I'm going to put into here uh, gmail.google.com okay so start it contacts the local DNS server and then that one contacts this DNS server which contacts the Google DNS server which comes back to here which then comes back to here, which then goes back to the machine. And then now that the machine knows the IP address, it can then start communicating across the network and it can get the Gmail page back. So at the moment that is working recursively and I'm going to show you the settings I've got for this. So the local DNS server, oh, I've got to be running. So when I open up the DNS server here, oh, it had this ticked, enable recursive domain resolution. And uh, essentially, uh, under its name servers, it just got dot, which is any server at all, contact DNS. And then it's got an A record that tells it that DNS is 10.10.11.11 .10 .11. this is just the name so uh, then when we have a look at the DNS server here the global one uh, it says essentially in its name servers that if you get a query for google.com you need to ask dns.google.com if you get a query for microsoft.com you've got to ask dns.microsoft.com and we have got IP addresses for those logged here and then lastly in the google dns 
we have got no name servers because we don't need them because it's not looking anything up forward. And you've got google.com and gmail.google.com listed in here. So essentially that enables it to find it recursively. Now, if I unticked the recursive button here and untick the recursive button here, then uh, I'm actually going to go to the Microsoft web server. I'll go to outlook.microsoft.com. We should see this time, because it's not recursive, that this machine is going to ask this server, then it's going to ask this server, and so on and so forth. So there we are. So it's asking that server. And then this. Can you see it's going to come back and it comes back to the notebook and then the notebook is going to ask the Microsoft DNS. There we are coming back and then finally it can get to the outlook.com. It's got the IP address. Everything's good with the world and it can download as usual. Now the settings for DNS are a little finicky it's something that as a tech professional you'll probably have to play around with DNS records at some point in your life so it's worthwhile kind of uh, getting into it a little bit so as I say the name server tells it where to look up other domains as name server records and the a records uh, tell it IP addresses of specific machines Last thing to know is these aren't the only kinds of records. There are others. Uh, one you should definitely know is the quadruple A record, so AAAA -A -A record, and that is the IP version 6 record. Phileas, unfortunately, doesn't support IPv6 at the moment, so uh, we will have to make do without. I hope that's a little bit interesting. If you weren't quite sure about all the settings and that kind of thing, I'm just being through all of the DNS servers. I'm just going to flash up in the uh, build mode now so you can pause the video, the settings that I've got on each of the DNS servers, like so, and like so. Okay, so uh, try setting up your own DNS server, get them working like mine, and in the next video, we are going to set up mail servers, and this is uh, something that requires DNS, which is why we've done it this way first. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.